Hey everybody, Pastor Ryan, the roving giant here. I'm heading out for a nice overnight hike tonight. We are on the Finger Lakes Trail some more. It's a beautiful snowy day. It's warm. It's like 30 degrees, 31 degrees, and tomorrow's going to be rainy. But like we said in the first video, there's no such thing as bad weather, just different kinds of good weather, right? We're going to hit the trail, and I'll give you a quick update on what the situation is, because this is a unique trip. This will be a really cool trip. So... Here's our trail map for today. Uh, I am parked right here, uh, just south of the Hesse Lean To. I've stayed at the Hesse Lean To, a really cool spot. I stayed there at the opening day of hunting season this year. But what I'm gonna do today, it's, it's about 9 a.m. I'm gonna make my way northwest and head up through here. I'll stop off and see this uh, this view of the river, should be pretty, uh, and make my way up to Whiskey Bridge here. Then, at Whiskey Bridge, I'm hoping to get there by about 10.30ish, and I'm going to be meeting a, a guy from Hammock Forms. We chatted, and he's going to come along on the rest of the trip with me. He does sewing, he does DIY stuff. Um, we're going to join together and do the rest of the trip from there. Uh, we're going to hike all along here, heading west on the Finger Lakes Trail, head up this hill, and then I need to switch maps. We'll have made it up the hill. We'll follow, there's some fields here, follow the road, all the way over to Camp Sam Wood, the, the property on Camp Sam Wood. There's a lean-to there, there's a pond there, so we should be able to have reliable water, and we're probably gonna camp around the lean-to. Both of us are hammock campers, so we probably won't camp in the lean-to, and uh, we should have some really cool gear stuff to show you and while we do that. Then, the next day, we're gonna hike out early and make our our way southwest all the way to this point right here so we'll have covered the area that gets closed during hunting season and finish off at route 19 which will conclude our trip hopefully you enjoy it so with the meetups that we're going to be doing it's going to require us to do a little bit of finagling with our vehicles i'm parked at where i'm starting to hike i'm meeting him at whiskey bridge at that point we're going to hop in his car drive up here to get my truck and then drive back down all the way to where we're ending the trail and then we'll come back to whiskey bridge and leave from there so we'll have dropped off a, a vehicle at the end of the trail uh, and we'll have a vehicle at the beginning once we head out tomorrow we'll be able to both hop in that car and drive the other one back to the vehicle that was left at whiskey bridge so this is some of the fun that you get to do while trying to arrange how your trails work or how your how your vehicles work while you're trying to do a trail and not have to double back on your space. Uh, it, it is a wet day though. Um, this is beautiful snow. I love hiking in this stuff, but uh, it is wet and it is tricky. So we're gonna do our best to stay dry as we, uh, as we hike through it all. But we'll keep you posted as we go. that this is really wet weather I got to be really careful hiking on this stuff I'm using my poles I'm going nice and slow because you could really hurt yourself easily by slipping on this snow but it's pretty I love being out here it's warm enough that I can take my hands out of my gloves occasionally and still feel 
like a functional human being. So if you come out in this kind of weather, come out, enjoy it. Um, but make sure you're wearing a rain jacket, something that'll keep you dry. Uh, it's warm, so uh, you have to ditch the mid layers early. I'm gonna be ditching my mid layer in just a second. Walk slow. Uh, you wanna cover mileage, but it's better to cover the mileage without broken, twisted, sprained, so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah. what I would do without these hiking poles. They have saved me from injury on so many occasions. Oh, they've paid for themselves a hundred times over in medical bills. Actually got these, these are uh, black diamond poles. I'm not sure what the model is. I got them at L.L. Bean. I was looking on the shelves for some hiking poles. Didn't have a ton of money, but was ready to get something mid-range. Didn't know my brands didn't really do all the research that I had needed to do. I just knew I wanted the flick lock. I get there, I see these for $29.95 or something like that. It was upper 20s. I'm like, cool, they look good enough. So I bring them to the register and they ring out $139.95 plus tax, so $140. I was like, what, are you kidding me? I saw the tag had $29.95. I told them that's what the tag said. They went and double checked and that's what it said. They gave them to me for $29.95. So I saved about a $120 on these poles and they they went and checked and their entire inventory had been listed at that same price which is just crazy so yeah the uh, I got a good deal on them and man they would have been worth 140 bucks I love these hiking poles well I'm gonna go back to using them instead of the camp <laughs> first big view can't really see much but it's still a beautiful spot it's just it's really cool because the you can just see the snow fading down past the trees it's just it's really nice here I think this is a this is a comeback spot I need to come back to this spot in different weather looks like we come across another great view out that way and a trail register Fill this bugger out. Last note was from Randy on February 16th. Today is February 22nd, I believe. I'm writing the 22nd. It may not even be the 22nd. The Roving Giant. Hey, buddy. This is awesome. Now that I've made it to the register in this overlook, I'm gonna cover some ground. It's about 10 o'clock. I need to huff it the next mile and a half or so, just under a mile and a half, to be able to make it and meet up with a guy from Hammer Forms. I had to stop and just at least take note of this. 
this has been <laughs> real slick, but it's a really interesting part of this trail. It's like this eroded ridge, but pretty neat. I just, uh, I just came out of this thicket here and three pheasants just, you know what they do. They just take off as soon as you almost step on them. It scares the ever living daylights out of me. <laughs> That's what keeps trail interesting. So I made it to the bottom of the hill, which means I'm right about there on the map. And uh, now it should be pretty much tractor roads and actual roads until I get there. But first, a nice view. Let's see the river down there. Cool. So I used to think that the woods were the only way to go, stay on the trail. But it's pretty cool being here on like the tractor paths. They're wide open. You get to see the fields and I don't know. I feel like the older I grow, the more I appreciate the beauty of things like a farm field. Uh, it used to be for me, I grew up in the southern Adirondacks, the foothills, and uh, I used to grow up hiking the high peaks, and I the mountains are still home to me, but fields are beautiful, simple hardwood forests are beautiful, there's, there's something beautiful to be found in all of it, and when it's all getting covered in snow, who can't complain, I mean really. <laughs> about another mile to go to get to the bridge, but I'm on just the roadside now, so nothing interesting should be happening, but well, hopefully a new friend is waiting for me, and uh, hopefully he understands, because it was a real slick trail, slow moving. Check out this old house. I made it to the bridge, and uh, on the other side, there should be a parking area and that's where Jeremy's going to be meeting me so uh, hopefully I'll be introducing you soon. So I'm here uh, waiting under the bridge uh, for Jeremy to arrive. I'm not sure, they said that the parking area is right down here but I'm not really sure how you get to it. Well, I'm not sure where Jeremy is, there's some finicky stuff trying to get down to this parking spot and I uh, I know he had to make a couple stops, so we'll see if he uh, shows up in the next few minutes, but I'm gonna grab a bite to eat while I'm waiting. Got a message from Jeremy. He's only about five, ten minutes out. The snow's really affecting the roads a lot, so uh, totally reasonable. Um, I, uh, while I was waiting, I thought I'd swing up here. This is the uh, where the Letchworth branch of the Finger Lakes Trail meets the the main trail, which heads down under the bridge. And uh, yeah, I've officially hit this point, um, and. Now will be main trail from here on out. We've been main trail so far, but uh, this is where I'll have to go to, when, when I finish the Letchworth branch, this is where I'll be finishing. So we'll look forward to seeing this spot again in a future video. back at the bridge here and just getting set up to hit the trail finally and um, we'll keep it posted as we go there's some 
he makes some really cool stuff. So we'll uh, tell you a little bit about what he does and uh, keep you posted on the details of the trip. And we'll uh, talk to you in a bit. So we just got off the off the vehicle parking. We're actually hitting the trail. Yes, sir. And uh, want to introduce you guys to Jeremy, right? Jeremy. Jeremy. Mr. Chevy, out. How are you? And uh, Jeremy was telling me he does kids nature advocacy, which is super cool. Well, hopefully you'll hear about that more as we go about the trail and talk gear and just enjoy this beautiful wet white weather. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this, is, this isn't too shabby. Nah, this is nice. Better than being indoors. Yep, definitely better than being indoors. <laughs> we'll Especially keep, on a Thursday. Yeah. We'll keep you posted as we go along the trail. See you in a bit. So we made it through a nice long flat section and now we're heading up towards the hill. Uh, the snow is still coming down, it's awesome, but I'm starting to wish I brought my snowshoes along. Um, it's slick under the snow because it's all so wet. It's fun to hike in, but it keeps you on your toes, that's for sure. So we just made it up through this field from the road. Got a trail register here. Just going to fill this out and we'll uh, trail again. slow for a little while because uh, it's just beautiful. We got big fat flakes of snow coming down. Everything's covered. We probably got four or five inches. It's really impressive. Uh, it's cool seeing the beech leaves all covered in snow and as we head down the trail it's just it's really pretty here. It's a nice section. Um, we've been chatting hammock gear the whole way and it's Oh man, I'm learning at a time. So, oh, got a stream crossing. making our way down this beautiful farm hill. There's been views off in the distance and all from the last spot that you checked in with us. And we're gonna start hiking down the road here. Uh, this road, we're gonna be following. Hopefully not road. get sideswiped by a yeah. out of control SUV. Yeah, let's hope people know how to drive around here. Um, but uh, as we as we walk, we've been, we've been chatting. Jeremy and his wife do life coaching and it's just really interesting thinking about all the I don't know, just how how fascinating it is to self-reflect and to really see what makes you who you are, what has made you who you are, and then what you're going to become as you look forward into your future and how all these factors have influenced you. And yeah. these are the kind of conversations that I feel like being out in the woods really, they, they bring these conversations out. I know for me, being able to slow down long enough to to just listen and notice and being away from all the commotion being away from my cell phone signal and my internet connection and uh, a lot of the other things that distract me personally uh, lets my mind slow down enough to reflect and just yeah um, I, I like to ponder you know I, I came out into the woods today this is who I am and 
I like to think when I return, who do I want to be? How do I want things to go differently? And I find it's in the day to day life of house and job and kids and responsibilities, it's hard to find the time to think about that and really reflect about and be intentional about what you want to create in the world. Um, whether it be for relationships or career or self improvement or health or anything, really. Um, like Ryan was saying, it's, it's, a, it's a nice reprieve to, to be out here and, and just uh, create that time. Um, Definitely. Yeah. I missed that rock by an inch. We're watching this plow go by up here, and uh, we're at East Koi Creek. Seems like a cool spot. May have to come back here in the uh, little later in the spring and go fishing. But this is a beautiful, beautiful creek going on. And we're going to be following that plow up that road to get to our, our next spot. Cool, sun's out. It's getting warm now that the sun's coming out. I'm just going to take a sec and fill up my water while I'm here by this pretty creek. So. part of the forest the trail just keeps taking lefts and rights and ups and downs there's trees down in front of the trail and puddles and it's like a maze so we're as we're working our way down this path it looks like the landowners this section of the trail have done a lot of logging clearing so a lot of the path itself is uh, either cut down or trees are down over top of the trail so we're kind of having to weave our way in and out as we make our way through. But we're not far off from camp, probably another half mile to three quarters of a mile, uh, and we'll, we will arrive at our destination for the evening. It's about 3.30, so we're making great time. to this road which is our last stretch back there is the pond that we'll be staying on but we just need to hike back this way a bit to get to the lean to and we'll be able to go and set up our gear and show you what we're working with all right so we just got ourselves some water out of the spigot here at the ranger's house and we're gonna make our way over to the camp we figured we'd make the trek out to get this water first rather than coming back later and definitely worth it it was a bit more of a walk and we don't know whether we'd be able to get water out of the pond that we're going to be staying at so now our packs are heavier <laughs> and we're heading to uh heading over to camp but the important thing is we're not going to fall in getting our water yes <laughs> we will not risk our lives for water on this day that trail register we are now at the last stretch before we find our lean-to and start setting up camp and we're, I'll take you along on all of it. So we found our lean-to. We have officially arrived at our camp for the evening and now we're just gonna set up. Once we get all set up I'll show you what what each of us are are hanging in and, and sleeping in and so on and so forth.
is how I do it. I got a stake in the ground. A loop goes through there. And then I'm going to try to do this with one hand. But you loop around. And then you grab the, the line again. And pull it through. Making a loop. And then you grab this end. And you go through the loop. Now that the loop's through, you can pull the whole thing nice and tight. At which point, you can tie it off right here. And then I need another hand. To pinch it down. Ta-da! Tight. So we're getting a cool demonstration of something here. Oh, check this out. It's like a hammock for just yeah, your it's gear. It's basically a homemade version of the Molly Mac gear hammock. To the seat box, so that just hangs over. It's got a little bungee cord. You hang it out of the way wherever you've got it. It's all waterproof. Um, I can't take any credit for any of this. This is all Molly Mac. I just roughly figured out how to make it. Uh, it's currently holding my beer. Uh, I did put some key rings in here. Oh, one cool. there, one here. It's holding my tree straps. There's a little pouch in here. So I got some plastic bags, things that are all blown around. Uh, and this is essentially everything that was in my pack on top of my hammock and my quilts. So hammock and the quilts are at the bottom so they're compressed. You need to get them out. Mm. I hate putting the stuff on top, either pushing it aside, putting it on the ground, or it all goes just dumped straight into there. Uh, this is a new suspension I'm trying out. Uh, all credit for this goes to Skidmark, uh, Tim. Uh, it's essentially just a 10 feet long piece of the new fancy webbing. Um, just a note, I actually find it's easy. It, 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 this is more prone to curling than the Kevlar. So uh, I'm actually not the biggest fan. I am also don't hang it like this. Uh, I only set it like this so that it doesn't slip down. Once I get my hammock on it, I'll readjust it. Mm. Um, but essentially, there's a double whoopee hook. Um, that this just slides in. So you can move this up and down the webbing wherever you need it to go. And then you can just do a simple um, a simple slippery hitch behind it. And that snugs it and that won't move. This is just a Dynaglide Prusik with a piece of string, which goes to my tarp. So the idea is you hang the hammock and then you figure out where this needs to be for your tarp. And I like that adjustability of the tarp, so it's all connected right to the yeah, single one. So the idea is, you know, if you That's want your tarp mean. higher, you could push this further back, and then just adjust where your tarp connects to this. And you know, with, with the tarps and the lines and the continuous loops on the hammock and where it needs to be, there's a lot of variables. So I think this is a pretty elegant improvement upon the descender rings or the. Climbing rings, or whatever they're called, uh, which kind of has you have to sort of have a fixed point, and then your your continuous loops need to be the right length in order for everything to be tensioned correctly. So this allows you to use it with multiple hammocks. Given, given, in theory, at least uh, I've only tested it in my basement to make sure it held me up. Um, so I haven't really adjusted. That's two different Kevlar dog bones that are just lock fitted together. So I have two different sharp attachment points on that. Cool. Um, what else can I say about this? Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not a fan of these lightweight webbings for trees. Yeah, they fold over way too easily. Um, I, I, in this in particular, when you're using the the, the prusik, this doesn't want to unwind. Mm. Um, and then when it becomes small like that, it damages the trees easier. Yep. So I think that what I might try to do is if this if this works out with this prusik and speed and this whoopee hook, um, I might make like four foot, um, five foot tree huggers out of the polypro, the white and black. I like that mm. webbing a lot. It's light mm. and stiff. It works great. Um, and I might just attach this to that because this weighs the same as Amsteel. And if I can do all this with it, it's a bonus because I don't have to bury anything. The bury is there's no minimum hang length. There's no slippage. I mean, it's... So we'll see. Uh, yeah. So now that I got all that stuff off, this is the cool part. Well, it's all cool, but...
That's pretty cool. So it's not tension, right? But yeah. Hey, my hammock and quilts are all ready to go. Didn't really do anything to it. Didn't do much. Yeah, I'm just going to back up a little bit farther and you'll be able to see it on the video. If you want to tighten it a little farther and then sit, you'll be able to see the difference a little better. Well, another thing you can do is you can tighten this up as close as it'll go. Oh, I'm on the loop, that's why. Let's see if you can tighten that up as much as it'll go. Adjust it that way as well. So then you're heading as long as you got coverage. And I got I brought little clips to put on here to, to give myself an idea of how much it's slipping, if any. Yeah. I got a set of clips for the straps and a set of clips for this. And I like my tarp as tight as the next guy, but it doesn't need to be guitar string tight, you know? Yeah. Boom. We just make sure that's not kind of... Yeah. Maybe yeah. It'll, make, it'll be a little different once it's unfurled, but... I really should lower this, but I don't feel like... That didn't affect the tension one lick. Hey, everybody. So, uh, we've been here hanging out by the fire and, uh, just chilling in the lean-to, talking gear, talking shop, and uh, uh, getting our dinners cooked. Um, now that it's dark, it's a little trickier to do the... <laughs> uh, can't fire smoke. It's chasing me. It's following me everywhere that I'm going. I'm trying to make sure I don't hit my head on anything while I'm running away. Uh, tall people problems. <laughs> but... Uh, I'm probably not going to check in with you again for a little while. Maybe I'll show you what we're eating, but once I'm done showing you what we're eating, I'll uh, probably stick to just the, the camp conversation. But um, I'll check with you again quick before I go to bed, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you again tomorrow morning. Uh, just headed into bed, got all situated. We had a nice meal, nice chat, got the some really cool philosophical stuff and um, I don't know I enjoy that. this is something I really enjoy about hanging out with new people is uh, you learn about their experiences you learn about what matters to them and it's it's really it's interesting it's really interesting stuff and stay curious everybody it, uh, don't pretend like you know what is happening in people's minds ask them and you'll learn some really interesting stuff and it, the world is a really interesting place, so um, I just I praise God for opportunities like this. Um, we are heading out early, so I'll I'll get up in the morning and I'll uh, get my oatmeal and <laughs> have a little cup of tea, and then we'll hit the hit the trail. Boots on the ground by 8:30, uh, so that we can get back to the truck by. Let's see here. We're trying to get back to the truck between 10 and 10.30, so, um, yeah, sweet dreams. Well, good morning, everybody. I, uh, just got up, slept wonderfully, and, uh, sorry for the blinking, the, the light is bright. Um, we, uh, it's about 6.30, and, uh, I'm going to start working my way up and uh, head over and start making some breakfast.
I'd love to show you guys more. Uh, we are finishing packing up here and finishing up our breakfast and hitting the trail. Uh, but my phone is yet again dying. Uh, my battery pack didn't last last night, so I need to uh, get a new battery pack and a memory card for this phone if I want to keep doing two-nighter videos. Seems to be just enough for a day hike, but not quite enough for two. So uh, I will probably throw a couple pictures, maybe a couple small videos, and see what fits. But in case stuff doesn't work, thanks for coming along. Out of the woods got a little bit of walking on the road here by the creek it's a pretty spot but all we have left is road so we're gonna follow the road back to the truck and call it a trip it's been a good trip nice and wet but a lot of pretty stuff to see and I'm sorry so we'll see you guys uh, on the next trip